be back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, fingers crossed you're watching this in black and white because this is the continuation of my pick series and I am absolutely delighted that today the person that I am collabing with is the ever fabulous Tara Kruger. Now, Tara here chose our photo. So, if you want to find out exactly which photo Tara chose for us to inspire our looks, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and how I achieved this look, then my friends, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. You will have seen from the intro, which fingers crossed was in black and white. Hopefully me saying that will remind me now to put it in black and white if I have forgotten. Now, this is a continuation of my pick series, but I am collabing with somebody new. Now I have collabed with him in a big collab. We both did the Nightmare on YouTube collab. Um, and I was so glad he did this because it made me discover his channel and I absolutely love it. Um, he is so talented and he does some amazing special effects, he does drag looks, he likes to be alternative. Um, he has a wee bit of a potty mouth so if you're um, not keen on that you probably won't enjoy his channel as much. Um, but I absolutely adore him. Uh, his name is Terra Kruger. I know, how awesome. Um, and I messaged him when we were all doing the uh, the Nightmare on YouTube collab and said to him, hey, how do you fancy doing a collab with me? Um, I've got this pic series, this photo inspiration series. Um, how do you fancy joining in on that? And he obviously took a look at my channel and then went, yeah, why not? Sounds good. I said, okay, do you want to choose the first picture or shall I? And he's like, no, I'll choose. And I love when people do that because most of the time people go, mm, no, you choose the first one. But I love when they go, no, do you know what? I am choosing the first one. Um, and he sent across this picture from one of my favourite films, The Lady Gremlin. The Temptation, because I have got a green wig, just to put a green wig on, do purple eyeshadow and red lipstick and, and just go ham on the bronzer is, is high, but that would be cheating. So clearly there's brown, green, purple, red in her outfit and her look and aesthetic. Um, and with the pick series, if you've not watched it before, there are two rules. Rule number one, you can only use colours that are in the actual photograph. Rule number two, you don't have to use all the colours. That's it. You can do, you can paint her on your cheek if you want. You could completely recreate her makeup look. You could do like a band round here, like a you know, avant-garde kind of, who knows. Um, he made her a drag look. But the whole point of this series was that it it interests me how two people can look at the same photo and draw different inspiration from exactly the same thing. Um, this I think is episode 32 of my series. I never expected it to be this popular but I love that it is because it's such great fun and obviously it's, it's so long as there's people that want to collab with me, it can be never-ending because there's always a different picture, there's always a different 
photo. There's always different inspiration each time. Right, so this is still a teaching channel. Um, so that combined with my chronic pain means I don't blend that quickly. So there is a speed widget up there. Crack on and use that if I'm going too slowly for you. It's really not a problem. Um, I'm just going to zoom you in and I'm just going to talk very quickly through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes. I've got deep set eyes and for a long time I was told I had hooded eyes because I get the same issue. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. Um, if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just across the socket and when I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through the crease. So I'm going to zoom you in, I'm going to talk you through the difference between the two eye shapes and then give you a work around for each eye shape so that you can follow any tutorial you see regardless of whether the person has the same eye shape as you or not. So, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed uh, as usual. My antiperspirant primer, I'm nearly out of this one. Can you say that? But I have got a backup waiting. Let's get you zoomed in, <clears throat> talk you through those eye shapes. If you're one of my regular viewers, you will have seen this a lot of times. So, unless you need a refresh, just zoom forward until you see me wave a, um, a brush at you with some colour on it. The eye primer I'm using is a Crow and Pebble. I do have a discount code for this, it's not affiliated. All my discount codes are listed in my description box and they will clearly state whether I have, whether I earn from them or not, whether they're affiliated or not. <clears throat> what I love about that particular eye primer is that it goes on dry. It doesn't go on sticky. I just use, I keep a specific fluffy brush I swirl this in the top of the primer and then just blend it out across my eye. Because I don't want to poke my eyeballs out really. Um, they've got six shades. The lightest is white, the deepest two are chocolate brown and black, and there are three skin tone shades in between those, so you should be able to find something that will work for you. The beauty of it going on dry and not being sticky means you don't have to set it but you can blend on it straight away so you get brilliant colour payoff when you're using colours basically. Right, when I relax my brows and look straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if the upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a half or a full hooded lid or what's known as a mono, uh, mono or an Asian eye. Now, I'll demonstrate with this eye, deep set eyes, because I'm blind in this one, so if I close this one I can still make sure I'm on screen. If I cover the visible mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that disappears back away. And if I cover the static visible lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that folds back away. And it's those two... Oh, sorry, I've got a I don't think I've rinsed my shampoo out very well today. My head itches. It's those two pieces of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lid individuals suffer from. Right, if you have hooded eyes, grab a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow, so I use slightly smaller blending brushes. Um, if I'm not doing an editorial look, I'll normally leave a gap between the colour and the brow. You may find if you are very restricted on space, you may have to take the colour right up to the brow. That's really not an issue. Right, if you have deep set eyes, the workaround for us is when we're blending a colour through our crease is just to sit back, relax our brows and just check we've brought it up high enough that we can see it when our eyes are open. 
So you can see it's two very different ways of being able to follow any tutorial. That's why it's important to know which type of eye that you have. Right. I am going to start off, because I paid a damn lot of money for him, so why not, with the Jeffrey Morphe JS8. This is his synthetic big round blender brush. It is clean. Look, there's no pigment coming off of it. It just needs its deep clean. And I'm going to start off by going into the Saharan. By Juvia. And I'm going to go into... I think Catacina to start with. Now these are quite powdery so just tap back off into the pan and then you can pick that loose pigment up when you come round next time to continue blending. So I've not put very much pigment on here. I'm going to start off up here, oh by the way if you're fast forwarding now's the time to press play. I'm just going to start off by very lightly blending this. And you can see I'm using circular movements that direction going towards the nose. And a bit of a bounce in the middle. And then reverse the direction to come back out again. And I'm holding the brush right at the very end. So I put as little pressure on my eye as possible. I'm just going to slowly build that colour up. So yeah, Terra Kruger does some amazing, amazing looks. He really does. I just... I wish I had half his skill. I really do. I mean, some of the drag looks he brings out are amazing. Um, I actually had to play his... Um, because obviously if you're in a collab, you watch everybody else's film and you comment and you like on it because... You know, that's, that's the point of being in a collab. You support each other. You don't just go in it for yourself. Um, but he did a look that was clown-esque. Um, and me having a phobia of clowns. I liked it. I commented on it. And then I played it at night when I wasn't actually um, looking at it. Because, yeah, scared. This cat Cena is actually the perfect colour in terms of the skin tone of that lady gremlin. It's got that kind of yellowy, orangey, Donald Trump's kind of... Do you reckon Donald Trump took a picture of the gremlins? his spray tan and went, I want to be that colour. I mean, seriously. The man has panda eyes. Well, reverse panda eyes. Someone should tell him about, you know, if you're going to go that dark with your tan, you really need to get some foundation and match it or some concealer. Right, I'm just relaxing my brows and checking that I've got the same shape both sides because um, I'm not James Charles, I don't photoshop my looks when they're finished, I don't use any kind of filters unless I, it's, it's an obvious snapchat filter like dog ears and stuff, um, but pictures that I put up will be how the look looks basically, how the look looks. Mm. I've got a clean washcloth that I'm just going to clean this brush off with. I prefer that to using a colour switch. Um, I find it's a lot more gentle on the bristles, especially if you're using a natural brush. This one's synthetic, but if you are using a natural brush, then it's much kinder on the bristles to use um, a washcloth rather than a colour switch. Right, I'm just going to switch palettes for the minute and I'm going to go across to the Magic Mini 
Then I'm going to go into Kogi, which is the red. I bet you thought I was just going to do red lips, huh? No. There is a brown in here, actually, that would have worked, funnily enough. I never think about that one. Right. So, same brush. Picked up pigment. Don't know what that was. Resident Ghost, probably. I'm going to run this through. Now, reds are one of those colours that either go really, really well or really, really badly. Red, purple, blue, green. Those are the worst colours to create. Or the hardest colours to create. But that's blending really quite nicely. I very often struggle here and here because I get dry patches on my eyelids. Um, but that's actually blending out really well. Take it up a little bit higher. I still want to see the the brown, but I'm going to pop a deeper colour through the crease. So I still want to see the red above it. There we go. Yes, yeah, so if you've not watched Terror before, you really are in for a treat. But as I said, um, he does swear. So God Kids, anything you hear him say, do not repeat in front of Mum and Dad, otherwise Auntie Angie will be for the high jump. So I'm just repeating the same thing this side. Now, I do struggle this side. I've got very deep creasing here when my eye was pulled around by the ophthalmic hospital as a kid. And what I normally end up doing on the deepest shade that I'm putting in through my crease, I will actually gently flex the lid and just make sure I've not got any of that tiger striping going on. But I only do it with the last colour because I don't like pulling my eyelids around. It's the, the thinnest, most delicate skin on your body, so you really do not want to muck it about any more than you have to. I always get more fallout on this side because this eyelid is looser. You know, I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone and this got pulled around a hell of a lot when I was a kid, so, you know, fallout, fallout is a thing. It's not just a game, it's a thing. I'm just going to clean this brush. And then go in with nothing on the brush and just buff over where the red meets that beautiful goldeny brown. Just to get a seamless blend. Clean the brush off again. Now, which shade do I want to go in? Okay, that's a very good question. I'm going to grab a slightly more tapered blending brush. This is the Morphe uh, M139. So it's, it's still a blender but it comes up to more of a point so I can control a little bit more where it goes. And I think I'm going to stay in this Magic Mini and I'm going to go into IFE, I -F -E, which is this gorgeous, really deep purple. It's, um, it's like a violet indigo purple almost. So it's got a shade of navy to it, but it is actually purple. And I'm going to very gently run this through my crease. and then very lightly buff that out as I come back along and just check I brought it up high enough, yay! Just gonna flick that end out a little bit. I've been struggling recently, well, I've been struggling most of the year to be fair. My fibro has been really playing up and it makes my eyes stream. Um, add to that the fact that apparently my hay fever is going schizo this year. 
and it basically means I've been struggling to keep my eyeliner on. So I've kind of been doing this with my eyeshadow instead to uh, give the illusion of a wing. I'll be tidying that up with micellar water shortly. Right, dip back into Aoife. just on the very outer third of my mobile lid like so and you can see that gives the effect of drawing the eye out and up even without having to do a winged liner so if you're struggling I've got um, a tutorial five minute two, oh, no, five minute a mini tutorial on how to do winged liner um, in my mini tutorial playlist so right you can really see what I mean here about those deep creases but unfortunately the only way I can deal with it is to actually stretch the lid out which I hate doing obviously that's just straining it even more so I do it for as short a period of time as possible if I'm putting shimmers on to the lid I also have to um, stretch the lid out otherwise what happens is the shimmer particles build up and pack into the deep creasing um, but they're kind of packed in loosely rather than being blended and um, they'll dry out through the day and then as I move my eye through the day it cascades down I'm just checking I've got the same shape both sides and this bloody palette keeps closing itself and fold it back on this there we go yes so I had to watch um, Terra's submission to uh, Nightmare on YouTube. I had to just listen to it rather than watch it because I just I don't do clowns. I really don't. Hubby got me to watch it and for the first time ever I was more scared than he was watching a horror film. Cellar water on it. And just tidy up the edge. I always do my eyes first now so that I can do this and I don't have to worry about. I used to put um, powder down to catch any fallout but that's that's not a good plan if you're over 30 because it's the equivalent of baking and uh, unless you're botoxed up to the eyeballs well, that's not the most flattering of looks there we go Which shades of green am I going to use? It's a very good question. Because I've got one in the Saharan, which is well, that's quite nice as a duochrome. And then I've got three in this palette. I'm definitely going to go in with that one. I think possibly this one. Hmm. Yes. I'm just going to clean my hand off before I 
managed to wipe it all out the side of my face, which I have actually done before, believe it or not. I say believe it or not, regular viewers will know what an absolute klutz I am. And will know that it's really not that unusual. Right, I am going to grab, this is actually, this is one of the Jeffrey Morphe brushes again. This is the JS24. It's actually an eyeshadow brush, but I like a lipstick brush. But I like this for getting right down into the corners there. Um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to wet these shadows today. I'm just going to use them dry. So, on the Magic Mini, I'm going into Boozo. And just picking some of that pigment up. I'm going to look into a little mirror down here so that hopefully I'll still be in screen there and you can see what I'm doing. I could cut the crease, but I actually quite like how it looks when the shimmer sort of goes over the top of the mat. You can sort of remember about how this gets right into the corner and it's really good for that. And of course I can just dip back into the palette again because I didn't wet the brush. Never go into a packed pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will bugger the pigment up. I'm just going to clean that and get any of the purple off of it. I do love Juvia's shimmers. They just they don't need wetting when you apply them, which is awesome. Right, how far across did I go? You can see I've got some tiger striping still there. But I knew that this was coming up over the top of it, so I wasn't overly concerned. That's really pretty. Right, to clean the brush off. And I'm going to go back into the Saharan and pick up that shade called Kia, which is the duochrome. Beautiful colour. just going to pop this on the second half of that, or the second third of that lid. Yes, I'm getting hella fallout and I really don't care. If you're worried about fallout, then wet the brush after you've applied the pigment. But I think that has blended really beautifully together. And the fallout dusts away really easily anyway, so super not worried. Super not worried, that is just appalling grammar. So, reload up the brush. And the same thing on this side. really am loving these colours together. I do love my Juvia's palettes. Um, if you want me to do some on like a retro review, just drop some palette names in 
the comments box and if I've got that palette then I will absolutely do a retro review on it for you. I've only done the one retro review so far. Um, but it went down really well. I did it on the um, Anastasia uh, Prism palette. Just going to pop some of my summer water on a pad again. Shh. Rude. And just... Go in and really tidy up and neaten up. And this lower lash line in particular. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go and put foundation and other base products on my face and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. You will see me instantly. I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello, I am back. Right. Going in with my little flat top brush. Now back into Aoife. Which is that beautiful deep purple. And I'm running this along under my lash line. I think I've got Jeffree Star powder up my nose. Oh, that one nice candy floss. I like his powder, but I don't think it's anything special. Um, I would just as soon use my Cotier Spun, which is considerably cheaper. Um, so, those of you who wanted a quick review of it, there's my quick review. It's okay, but it's no better than Cotier Spun. It's a quick one, wasn't it? And then I'm going to go back into of the Sahara. Now, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for blending out under the eye. And I'm going to go into um, Cactusina which is that first golden brown shade that we used. And I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line. Shh. Honestly, I get nothing half the day. And then as soon as I sit down to film, my phone goes buzz, buzz, buzz. Didn't buzz once while I was doing all my foundation and everything. No. No, why is me to hit the record button? Honestly. So... Just softening that up nicely. Do you know what? I really, really like this eye look. Right, continuing with the Juvia, Juvia's theme, because I have used Juvia's blush. I'm going to use the Tribe Highlighter Volume 3 by Juvia's, which looks like this. This was a gift from my friend Kay. This is actually a lipstick brush that I bought from eBay about 10 years ago. But it's great for getting up under the tail of your brow and for doing in a corner work. You can just do the tear duct like that, 
but with my eye shape I like to bring it along underneath just blend it gently into the colours that we've run along under the eye. If I just do the inner corner on this one can you see the difference how this side looks more open and finished? Um, oh, that's my front door, hold on. I am back. I decided to off camera just do my usual chuck um, highlight over the rest of my face, bung some mascara on, I use Benefits Bad Gal Bang and the lip gloss that I went for is one of the Jeffrey Morphe lip glosses Berry Blast from the Red set. So, this is my finished look. I'll pop Madame La Gremlin back over there. What do you think? Does this represent her in all of her wicked, debased, debauched glory? I like it. I actually think it's a really, really pretty look. Uh, and I'm really glad that you sent that as the, uh, the picture, Tara. Thank you so much. I've really, really enjoyed doing this look. In fact, I don't want to take it back off, but I've got to because I've got to film another film. Urgh, that's frustrating. Mm, I don't want to... F I need to catch up with my filming. But I really wish I'd done the other look first now. Because I really like this look. Anyway. If you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots. I got an email on Monday saying... Well, I got three separate emails on Monday saying I'd got... Uh, new subscribers. Um, Monday morning I always keep a log of, of what my stats are for the beginning of the week and um, when I went on and checked after the third person had come in I went on I think I was uploading yeah I think I was uploading another video that I just edited and I noticed that my numbers were actually down by two. I checked and the three new subscribers were still subscribed which means YouTube deleted five of my older subscribers. Now I have never bought a subscriber in my life. I don't see the point. I do this for fun and to help people. If I was buying subscribers, sweetie, I would be over the 1000 mark a long time ago and would be earning money from this. So, please double check you're still subscribed. Then once you've liked and commented and maybe even shared this video for me, and we're going to need you to go over to Terra's page and check out his look and see exactly what he has done as uh, his inspiration from the same picture. I can't wait. I tell you, while you're watching me, I am going to be watching him. Now, if you are here from Terra's channel, hi, hello, welcome. I'm a little bit of a different style than his, but if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing you've enjoyed it just a little bit. Uh, if you have enjoyed it and you would like to join the 4F family, we would be delighted to welcome you. Just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. And then, if you want notifications, jump through however many hoops YouTube want you to jump through now to get notified. Gone are the days you could just like a channel and YouTube would tell you when they uploaded new content. But we would be delighted to welcome you to the 4F family. I've got a lot of other films you can watch. If you're still not sure from this one film, or if you are sure and just want a good old binge watching session, I think I've got, well I've got over 200 and some odd films that you can watch of varying lengths, varying types. I'm sure you'll find something to interest you. Right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, darling, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.